My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and uh, this is stage two of the, oh God's sake, the Unic engine. The smoky engine, so we've got a stage two. Now, this is where I want to put stage two and three together. And this is what I was talking about in the first video, that didn't make much sense, you'll see what I mean. And we've left behind... Um, our stage one, which was the carb and the water section. So we're coming in from here, and we'll call this 90 degrees, because we're going by what the engine said. Uh, but by what's being said, what some of the diagrams say, what the pattern was meant to get across, so on and so forth. And then what happens is, is that we come to uh, an impeller, like so. Right, we'll just do something like that, like that, right, with a little nut on the end. But what we'll do is we'll just do this. Right, we're not really bothered about how it works so much. And then we'll have an, a, a manifold which goes to a valve. Right, that's what we'll do, like that. So I hope that's clear. And then, what it's got then, on the outside of this, is it's got this section where, like that, this is where exhaust gases are fed through there, out of there, right? So this is exhaust gas. And as it shows you in all the pattern and stuff, um, this is not, it's specifically quoted as not actually providing any more boost. Uh, what it's doing is, is it's acting as a one-way check valve. We can actually get rid of this because this is going to give people kind of like other ideas of what's meant to be going on. I'm just going on with what's been said. So what we can do is, there, we can put a check valve in. That's what it's designed to do, supposedly. Right. So, let's just say this is coming in at um, 90 degrees. We also know from our ideal gas law, otherwise known as the real world, that this should be at 4.41 PSI. Right, that's what it should be at. And... The exhaust gas is in here. We know real detail of how hot they should be. The whole system is designed so that this air here is 230 degrees C. All right, that's how hot it is before it's meant to go into the intake, which is, well, it's... <laughs> You've got to remember, this is a fuel-air mixture, right? And this heat comes from you know the exhaust much like the water jacket affair exactly how you achieve this we don't know well we don't know our our in, intake our exhaust gas temperature here the T here is uh, unknown we don't you know whatever it is uh, doesn't say it's not possible what I'm saying is we're not sure it doesn't really matter right because we're going to talk about this check valve malarkey. So what you do is if you take your starting point, which is um, a gas temperature of 90 degrees C, 4.41 PSI, um, we can then do the same calculations for this, because all of a sudden the, the temperature's gone up. So in a sense, what is the pressure? And we're doing the same thing. Um, we're using PV equals nRT. Now I'm going to talk more about PVNRT um, in a little bit, but regardless, that's what we're using. So we, the moles hopefully shouldn't have changed um, according to the system because we're not losing any power. Our gas constant is the same, and it's our temperature that's going to change. The volume should be constant, so it should be the temperature is changing our pressure, basically. So now we've gone up to this, 230 degrees 
And that means that in here, the pressure is 12, was it 12, I've just got it all written down, 12.24 PSI, right? Now you've got to remember, this is not because this turbos, or this turbine, this impeller, sorry, not turbine, this impeller's here, that's just to stop it backing out. So, the way impellers work is that you are trying to impart enough uh, momentum, in a sense, to your intake to stop it backing out. Let's hope this holds steady, and this is the peak, because that, uh, you know, 12 PSI means that the, the turbine, she's going to have to really work to do this, right? It's, it's not that kind of pressure. I don't know what turbine, I, you know, I don't know what turbine, I don't know what the specs are, anything like that. So we just have to say, yes, this will be adequate enough to act as a check valve. That's all I can say there. Um, but we're talking an incredible temperature. Let's just hope that there's no, um, any kind of ignition at all, you know what I mean, we're getting close now, we're getting really quite close. And Smokey did say in an interview that this will run on really shit octane stuff, it's not, you know, 120 octane, nothing like that. You know, we're talking, um, he said it'll run on regular low octane fuels, 85, I think, you know what I mean, whatever. The fact of the matter is, is before we get anywhere, we are seriously hot, and we are, a, a, you know, a seriously high pressure. And the thing is, is that the back pressure at the turbine side to drive this, just to keep atmospheric densities of air and pump more heat into this, it's, it's just phenomenal, right? Not only that is that, you know, you, at these temperatures, your impeller's going to start getting close to, you know, you're going to have to have a lot of clearance, which means at slower speeds before this thing spools up, um, and it's almost like a supercharger where it's in step with the air, you know, the incoming air. It's just, in other words, what I'm saying is this. We've got 4.14 PSI this side. We've got 12 PSI this side, so 4 and 12 on this side. As this thing starts to spool up, and you've got to remember it's a knock-on effect, It's the air's got to get in there first, the exhaust gases, as soon as you start up, the exhaust gases are going to start heating this section. So stage two and three. The stage two and three is, there's the dividing line, supposedly. It's a, whatever, the actual turbine housing, the, turb the impeller housing is actually heated up. Um, you know, you're going to have to start the engine up. The exhaust gets pretty hot pretty quickly. So this is going to get pretty hot pretty quickly. But you're, you know, sat at idle and your volumetric efficiency isn't very good to start with. So because the volumetric efficiency isn't very good, then your waste heat isn't that high. It's all proportional, but it isn't really that high. And but this is still going to start getting hot. So it's already going to start to want to push air back out before you even start what i'm saying is is that this will get heat saturated just on idle you know what i mean if you leave it for idle for like a couple of minutes you're going to saturate this but you're already at low speed low volumetric efficiency low everything um just because of the rate at which the heat's dumped into it they're not in lockstep so you can you can tell your bike you know you, or your car or whatever but you can sit there you can have it on idle and you can quite easily get that to seriously hot with not actually doing anything because the system is designed to remove waste heat you know while you're moving so they're not expecting you to sit there all day hence why a lot of these things have smaller radiators and fans you know what i mean um but this thing is already dumping it into the intake before you've really got into that sweet spot we'll talk about that sweet spot later um in the next video but we've still got 
state what I like to call stage four, which is what happens in here. So in this end, when we get here, stage four, this is where you're just getting into the realms of just pure bollocks. <laughs> Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>